thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Go magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Good morning to one and all, and welcome to another Sunday morning worship here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. It is indeed a pleasure having you with us this morning. I'll be about to get started and ask you to stand with me. Page number 175, and we sing to him, To God be the glory, great things he has done. Once again, for you that may be watching by Facebook, we are streaming live from Tabernacle Baptist Church. Freeport Grandma, I'm aware of senior pastor, Pastor Alvin Woodside, assistant pastor, minister Nora Benning. Amen. Page 175. To God be the glory, great things he has done.
then page number 22, page number 3, you will think a little bit about the blood this morning. There is power in the blood. Let us remain standing, you can see it all night. Let's stand and sing to the honor and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All of you that can stand, let us stand. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you believe all the victories made? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonderful power in the blood of the man.
that us is too busy and trying to bring about change. So we keep that in mind. Uh, our new activities are to come as a part of the process. Then we have a number of activities coming in church on September the 15th and Sunday through Wednesday. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday, Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, we plan on. We have a mission conference. Missions is at the heart of God. He was the first missionary. He had seven came to earth to die for the sins of the whole world. And so if you have not been um, putting your money in there for missions, um, try to get a call before we start in uh, before the mission conference coming in September. And then now start praying and asking God. What he have you to give by faith? It's not something that you ask. It's not something that comes from your paycheck. It's something that you believe in God to be able to give to you to be able to support missions. To be able to support them through prayer. And you talk about financial giving. And everybody can participate in this. So this is for the children of God. You can say to God, I'm going to give a dollar a month for missions. It's two dollars. Whatever God lays upon your heart. You do that and give to the mission. The mission is about the heart of God. Brother A.J. James has come. He has a number of men that will come with him. And they're going to come preach and leave. Come preach and leave. And then we close up on Wednesday evening. And then I have a bit of business. I spoke to Brother A.J. James. And um, I think Pastor knows already. And he's praying that we will be praying for him about praying. And so God answered that prayer. And so we know that God here, but we answer the prayer. So he just knocked it off the press. God has provided a plane, a plane for the AJ James. So let's pray that we have a wonderful missions conference today, September 15th to 18th. We don't have a bulletin this morning, but all these things are in the bulletin, so do remember that. And then we're going to have a, 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 a day of going out, we're going to have a youth service the last, excuse me, the last Sunday in the month of September. We have all the young people doing the singing, reading, poetry, specials, whatever is going to take place. We want them to be involved in that as a staff and going out to try to bring uh, the group and youth ministry here at the church. And then October, we're going to have a friend day. And uh, there have been three gift certificates given out. The person that brings the most visitors, the minimum amount of persons. Qualified for the gift certificate to be fine. So once you have five or more people to do on Friday, uh, we're going to try to see if we get friends to come back, uh, get, we get a little early, we get the ice cream out, and then we'll get some cake. And we can get to everybody that will come out for the service, maybe a little sodas, get some for people to take home. And then November, uh, the last Sunday in November, it's uh, our Thanksgiving service. Uh, ham and turkey, small things of ham, turkey, bread, we have a whole list of things, but nevertheless, God tells me that we'll see what happens. If we don't want anybody to come to get a little, just get a little snack. We're not trying to give them a big dinner, we're trying to give them to get a little snack. And then we want to close up the year with our Christmas and Tara and play. We have a lot of singing, a lot of poetry, a lot of scripture reading. Just want to have a good old time. If you make a big deal about it, it'll be a big deal. Oh, you sit and cry about it, you'll be sitting and crying for a long time. Get involved, go, do what you have to do. Then remember our homecoming arrival next year with Brother Randy Dignan. He's coming from Mark from Martin Floor, uh, along with the people. And so we're looking forward to having a great time, Lord willing. Pray before you know it, it'll be a Christmas season. And pray for all the children that are returning to school, pray for all the children that are there. We think I got it all, and we didn't miss anything. We just remember these things, many of these things in prayer, and I remember to take attention to those things as we approach Pastor the day. All right, uh, it's time for our morning offering. We're going to ask God to come. And while the worship is coming, we are reading from Thank you this morning. Thank you for your grace. Oh God, we're so thankful for your mercy. Father, God, we pray now that that's the kind of stuff that we are going to take up this year. And we just want to give our to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Colossians chapter number one. Colossians chapter number one. Uh, you can pay attention on the screen. Oh, 
Paul is not reading along with the Bible, but he was reading his prophecies and philosophy stuff and what. And if I would tell you the reading, it's going to be brought to account by Scott. Colossians chapter 1, how far do you want to read this? Or the Colossians chapter number 1. Are you a smart man? You're deputizing. They didn't know that you had deputized your food. Colossians chapter number 1. Verse number 24 to verse number 29. Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 to verse number 29. Just remember a lot of people who are traveling, you want to run the mercy of the church.
bulb, the light bulb. You look back. Oh, time. Time is a light bulb. The song, the light bulb.
speaking of the topic of reconciliation. Reconciliation, I know you know that the word means. It means to make peace with your enemy or the people that you might have gotten angry with. Make peace with your enemy. Because a lot of times, you know, we have a little, or we have little issues going on in our lives. These issues cause us a problem. Jesus speaks about it, God speaks about it. Even God, uh, in the Old Testament, with the prophets, and Paul, you find that um, that is dealt with over and over again. But it's so often it is overlooked in our time. And so we need to look at these things and, and take them into consideration. In verse number 20, it says, And how we made peace through the blood of his cross by him who reconciled all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether there be things in the earth or in earth or things in heaven. Father, thank you once again for being here today. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for your love. I pray, God, for your leadership. I pray the directions in the service this morning. I pray, God, for those who are not well in body, those who are do not do well in heart. I pray, God, in our for your leadership. God, we know that many times people are going through uh, many issues throughout their life. Father, sometimes they may not talk about them, but they're all there dealing with them. I pray God for those who may be like that today. I pray Father for the gospel message. I pray God that I may use it. That when we raise it again, those who are away from us, that you bring them safely in Carlos and you are safely every one time. My Lord, my Lord, we say this this morning, my Father, we pray in your name. I have to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Reconciliation occurred. When two people are at odds, we experience this from time to time. The differences of opinion sometimes cause clashes. Just because I don't agree with you, and these things need to be resolved. My fellowship needs to be rekindled. Friendship needs to be rekindled, restored, and reestablished. There may have been times in your life when you uh, may have gone through this, uh, when you needed to be reconciled with someone, but you just put it off. You just continue. You said, well, it was me who caused the problem. And, uh, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to apologize for. Maybe I was true in the case, in that case, but Jesus said in Matthew, that if your brother has caused you against you, you will go to your brother. Because your brother comes to you, the one who caused the problem, that's not the one that Jesus said would go and make reconciliation. Perhaps reconciliation was needed with your parents. I don't know, maybe you know, there are children who are losing their parents uh, because something their parents may have done to them and they feel as if their parents should have done. Maybe it's uh, between a husband and a wife. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, think, about, think about it. Uh, these things happen. In the gospel, we have the situation with the young man who sent his dad and asked his dad to give him a portion that belonged to him. It doesn't really belong to him. It was his dad's um, asset. But he said, um, uh, you know, uh, he wants whatever it is that his dad thought he would have built in after he would have died. He said, give me my portion now. But when um, uh, 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 he came to the priest, eventually he realized he had sinned. In verse number 18, he said, I'm going to rise and go to my father and say to my father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. And, um, and I'm no longer going to be called thy son. He, re he realized. That he needed reconciliation. He got what he what what, what really was not his. But his father out of the compassion and the goodness of the heart gives him in anyhow. Sometimes reconciliation is needed between you and a friend, a brother, and a sister. I, I, I talked to someone a few months ago, and he was telling me about these two friends who were good friends from school time. But something happened between them one day. And, and, and uh, they let uh, at least one of them to meet with the other one because uh, things didn't go his way. So later on, they made friends. Um, uh, they, I don't say some say they made friends, they were, they were friends. They made reconciliation. So sometimes reconciliation, reconciliation is even needed because we have hurt someone we do not even know we hurt. We hurt. A lot of times we offend people, but they may not have said anything. They don't require whether they were offensive or the way it's needed. Reconciliation is needed in our lives. We hope to have table to talk. I don't know where you might be today. You might be watching and listening.
listening to this message, the smiling of somebody there offended you, and you have to get the other way around. You may not have spoken to that person for some time. But now you realize that if you're going to try and deal with this God, you need to get that right because we are sinners. We are offended the holy and the almighty God when we offend one another. So we need to make sure that if we want to experience God's blessings and have everything in order, we do not deserve forgiveness, but if you fail to forgive, so if God tells us to forgive, you forgive not one another, neither will I have any problem to forgive us. And so we need that to say in the book of Romans chapter 3. Verse 10 to 18 says, As it is written, there is none that is not of God. There is none that understands it. There is none that sees after God. They are all gone out of the way. They have yet to become uncomfortable. There is none that do good but not one. They have filled with no sepulchre of the dead. Um, they have used deceit before you have asked. There's only their tongue. No one has asked. Name venom. The poison of venom. Venom of a, of a, of a killer snake. Of a, of a deadly serpent. They come in their tongue. Whose mother is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift. Are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes while they were uh, as a nation. Uh, this man came into the form where they were suing somebody to one of the business stands, a stand to me on the answer. Two young men were stuck. One what to come to the ten weeks uh, to make it in the other one a few days later. What caused that? Anchor. The poison of ass. The feet are swift to share blood. That is what anger will do. This is the bad news. So the good news is, of course, that God long ago um, uh, took the matter into his own account and he made reconciliation for us uh, when we could have made it for ourselves, provided peace for all who will come to God. Uh, uh, through him, that we can find peace with him. That's why I want to consider reconciliation as described by the word of God this morning, Paul in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 to 29, as we study this passage. And uh, uh, it's important because the uh, word of God explains to us. Now, uh, if you do not take it into account, it is not because God did not give you an opportunity, but it is because you chose not to. There are people who are like that, and you expect for God to bless you. You expect to have the favor of God upon your life. You would pray together in the morning and talk to you pray. You, you, you read your Bible, and then you still get to say, Oh, God, that it is not me. It is not Jesus either. He came, he died in spite. He died because he loved us. And so, number one, look at the means of reconciliation. Talk to somebody from the church. The means of reconciliation. It is, it is, it is very clear. Here in the word of God. And so, what does it mean? Verse number 20 says, I have we made peace through the blood of his cross by him who reconciled all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Jesus Christ made not an effort, but he made a decision. Here we see how God provided a new way of peace between Himself and a righteous God, between Himself and a sinful man. There, secondly, a need for peace in this world. When you read the book of Genesis, you know it's eight, how God saved the civilized world, what was destined for death and destruction. He eradicated, God has eradicated man for eternity. But in his compassion and mercy and grace, give man a chance. This is what God is doing today. It is giving man a chance. In Hebrews chapter 2, where 2 2 3 says, Bear in mind, not he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worked in the children of disobedience. And one more, more so, we all had our conversation. The Lord comes and had our conduct, our behavior, and mind, not in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh. Not of the mind, but more by nature the children of God, we must as others. Or Paul is saying here, you do not know where you were when Jesus met you or when you met Jesus. You don't know what you were doing. You 
you are the type of person that you are, how he forgave you, why can't he forgive us? He said, God provided that peace through the blood of Christ. The steadier people are going to be forgiven, the people that we expect the favor of God upon our lives. How is that possible when the word of God is precise as clear? Someone has to pay for our sins to God to forgive and take us to heaven. That's not someone with Jesus Christ. First Peter 1 18 to 19 says, For as much as we know that he will not redeem you, but if redeem you, he will not bore. The corruptible things of silver and gold, listen, nothing in this world is worth to pay the price. For your sin and mine. From your vain conversation received by the tradition from your father. Verse 19. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, of the lamb of the blood, and of the spot on his own throne, satisfied with nine that much more than being now justified, just as though you've never sinned by his blood, we shall be saved from not putting on to God for God. We go to bed that he can speak like a baby. I mean, you can speak with no fear because you've been justified. Because you've been redeemed. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you go to bed tonight and lay your head down by any time. You can speak in peace. Help to know it that if you do not wake up on the side of eternity, you'll open your eyes and help to God because of the peace of God. Not only did Jesus reconcile sin to himself, but the devil says that Jesus has reconciled all things. Christ returned to bring the devil to complete submission to him. So that we are in the utopia of a great peace. The peace to rest from north to south. All the world will have peace. There will be a total peace with God in the natural world and in the world of the world of man as we look forward and also today. And there will be a new heaven and a new world according to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. John of the Lord says, and I saw a new heaven. And in new heaven. For the first heaven and the first heaven, now when he said the first heaven, he's not speaking about the whole of God. He's speaking about where the birds are flying, and where uh, the, the, the airplane and the space shuttle fly. That is heaven also. You see, that is a, he said, there'll be a new heaven, there'll be a new atmosphere. You see, there'll be, there will not be a simple atmosphere. There will be no, there will be no sunrise up there in space. God, those things will be moved. You have a new heaven. It will, the, it will be the way it was supposed to be from creation. You see, the new earth, the first earth, the, it says, it says the first earth was passed away. There was no more sea. Do not go to that. When, when Noah was given the uh, command to build a boat, an ark, that's why the people did not listen. They've never seen a body of water before. What's Noah doing? Where does Ark going to go? In a float, which is the river we have, the size of this Ark was humongous. They could not comprehend that. There was no sea. After the corner the, 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 the of the deep was broken up, Earthquake and rain, there was a sea. But the God said, There'll be no more sea. Now we now, if you look at the you look at the world map, you can see everything, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. If you take the land then, and you put it together, you get a stick right again. I believe when the, when the earthquakes happen, they will flood, and the land break up, these tremendous waves pull away from each other. Then there were nations, but there are nations, but God said, I'm going to go away. Uh, take away the war of the body of water. There'll be uh, one song that said that the earth is one foundation of Jesus Christ our Lord. You see? We look forward to the day when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. I believe that this is the time when Romans 8 and 21 will be fulfilled according to Paul it says in verse 21, Romans chapter 8. But the creature itself also should be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. What a blessing, what an expectation. When we read the word of God, we 
see a fault. That's where your fault of something. This is why it's important for a man and woman and young person to pray to the Lord and Savior. Because if this was all your life, like I told the folks yesterday at the funeral, if this was all your life, I would, I would have been preaching at the funeral yesterday. I would not be living for God as I am today. I would not be in church. If this was all your life, if then you die, you're done. What do you want? But I go. Philippians 2 9 and 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 2 11 said, the, at, at that time, sorry, the, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, things and things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Today you might have a liberty and a freedom to live peace with Jesus Christ. You're not forced to do it. Nobody is twisting your wrist to do it. You remember when you were starting at school and sometimes you played with your friend and they thought they hate you call him daddy or uncle, you know how they take your hand, put it in the back of the tree, you name. And they call you daddy. Call me uncle. And eventually you would, you would say, okay, daddy, daddy, daddy. And then when you get away from your money, you become the old dog. Because you only call him daddy because of the, they force you to do it, but Jesus didn't force you to do it, trust them. He gave you a liberty of freedom. Do it of your own volition, your own will. Trust the Lord God. You see. However, only those who know Jesus Christ can experience this peace. Revelation 20 and 15 it says, Whosoever was not found living in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And don't worry about that who's like, I believe there is no God. I believe I know no one being done for all I can do is I like. The day is coming. That day is not far off. They're going to cry. They're going to beg. They're going to wish. But it will be to no avail. I don't want to listen. I don't want to put down the way to know Jesus Christ. If you read the book of the Revelation, it says, Let them cry to the rocks in the mountains and fall and enter the high from the face of the Almighty God. Can you imagine a man going a mountain to fall on him? Just to obey the presence of God. It says in Revelation 20 and 15, Whosoever was not found him in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so the means of reconciliation to God uh, as a race of man, and the means of reconciliation to everything in heaven and earth. In the blood of Jesus Christ. That was not shed. That was not shed in vain. I do pray that that person who do not know Christ as their Savior will come to trust him today. So we see the means of reconciliation. Number two, we see the miracle of reconciliation. Verse 21 to 23. Colossians chapter 1. You are, and you that are sometimes very hated, and enemies in your mind by evil works, yet now are you reconciled. The body of his flesh through the death, you know this crucifixion, to present you holy and unbelievable and unreprovable in his sight, just as though you never seen, just as though you were not perfect. David said, I was. Shaped in sin. I was born in sin. I was shaped in iniquity. But Jesus said, Paul says here, because of Christ, he presents you unbelievable. There is no charge against you. When I was on the court, you and I are caught. Uh, 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 you and I come to court here before us. No matter what crime they commit except murder. When they turn 18, you have a word that they use to call a sponge. That means that it was wiped away. It is not recorded against your record. If they committed any crime after they became an adult, 
God didn't call for the American to say, you have to be partial. No, that is not on the book. And this day they cannot mention it. But if an adulterer comes in and mind, 20, 30 years ago, and they go back before the court, when they read up your charges to you, the court will ask if there are any previous charges against this person. And then they'll go back to you and say, yes, in 1925, this is 2004, they did it. As a matter of fact, so when I came down, I to the U.S., they put me in the box. When I was 23, 24 years old, I found a 78 bought a bottle in the time yard, and I took it home. A friend of mine, but I thought he was a friend, came and he borrowed it, he got it, and he came and he said, he's not letting me, he said, I want to get in. Well, he was in front of the law, but it was 99 nine. So they arrested him and they, they, took him, they took him in. And so they asked him, God to put him in the office of Bahamas again. I don't know if God is angry. And so he said, God is home. A friend. He come and so called my name. And so they came in and said, Did you write this man? And said, I did. I am not God. I thought, I found it. It's mine. The Bahamas again has reported it stolen. This was, I was 20, I was 24, 25 years old. Long time ago. People every time I travel, they call me the back. They have it on my, they have it, they don't have to get name, they have it in code. It's in around 24 to 25 digits. The immigration food processes me, do not know what it's there for, but they take me in the back, and they go send me to the computer. And I send it to the back, I say, sir. This thing here now for the last 150 years. I said, if I was a criminal, who would think you could have to do that? I don't know why they said that this year. You don't think of a criminal. Once you come up to the EU form, and it's not an immigration officer, you don't know what it's for. So, and all they do when they get in the back, they, they put it on the stick. It's all. Look at this. They tell a woman. But what happened is not expunged. It's not breaking away. And Jesus yeah. reconciled himself. Yeah. When I think Christ, all things are passed away, and they are all things are to come. You see what reconciliation is doing? It's a miracle of reconciliation. He said, He says, in verse 22, in the body of his flesh, through death, he presents you holy and unbelievable. Unreprovable in the sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and set up, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I call and made a minister for him. We believe Paul shows us what a great miracle that reconciliation is for one who has come to Jesus. So, verse 21 says that we were alien one that we were alienated from God. Now I've got the citizenship. Though I was not born in America, but I am now a citizen of America because I got my citizenship. I'm not a citizen of America. That's what it's saying. The word means a strain or we would say, when you use the word alienated, there was a day I, they took the sign down, they didn't go to America. And those from foreign countries, they had a sign that they said aliens. People complain about it, they moved the sign aliens, one time rather than that. You didn't like the sign alien. But if you are not a citizen of that country, you are an alien. This is what we were before we trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We were alienated from God. We were estranged from God, separated from God. Our sins separated us from God. We were the enemies of God. You know, we might have thought we love God. We often sing about how much we love Jesus, but how we live. We are always prepared for our hostility. He is the new vision. Hostility causes us to hate people. But we say we love God. How can we? John the beloved says in John 
love you, right? Let's finish reading what our scripture says. You continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard. This was preached to every creature that is under them. Therefore, I call on David. Uh, the word in here does not suggest you will be your salvation. This verse, of course, it connects with the verse, in connecting with it, the verse 23, means that you are secure. It means that if you are truly saved, you will become rooted. Do not if you lose your salvation, if you are truly saved. Because if you're not truly saved, you will not continue. That's why I said if you continue in the faith, who joined the Lord said, why did they tell me from us? He said, because they were there all of us. They ran away from us because they just ran to expose what they really were. They made a professional confession, but they never was regenerated. Say if the Bible teaches the final preservation of the saints, it's also teaching that the saints are those who finally are preserved in Christ. Continuance in the test of reality. John chapter 10. I like, I like this thing, I like this better. It teaches this is the finality of one who trusts in Christ as their Savior. Look what it says in verse 27 to 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Look what the name is. And I give unto them, look at these words, eternal, eternal life. When you are saved, you are eternal life. The moment you said, Lord, I confess, Lord, I receive. He said, I give unto them eternal life. Notice the next word. Never. And they shall never be have eternal. And he said, you will never will perish. Look at the next word. Neither shall any man the word in. Are you a man? Or woman? Young person? Neither shall any man cut. Then out of my hand. You can't get yourself out of God's hand. I can't get you out of God's hand. No one else can get you out of God's hand because He has given you eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't stop there. Verse 29. He says, My Father which is me is greater than any man. He's greater than all. No man. Able to cut them out of my father's hand. Then he said, You are a Negro, and my father died, my father is one. No one can get us away from him. Lastly, the ministry of reconciliation. The 24th and 29. Who now rejoices in my suffering for you? Fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my death for the body's sake. Is the church. Therefore, I have been a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the will of God. Verse 26. Even the ministry which has been hid from ages and from generations have been made manifest to the saints. For whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the fact of his mystery, of this mystery among the Gentile, which is Christ. In your own glory. Whom we preach, one every man, teaching every man, and all wisdom that, that we may present every man perfect in the first name of the Lord. Or complete in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor striving according to his will. And his will. Perfect and made mighty. Yes, Christ. Really, the apostle Christ. 
is to involve each of and, and to sending us as though you never sent. Thank you. 